Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Southeast Termite and Pest Control. When it comes to pest control, no one in East Tennessee can beat these folks. I know because I use these folks. They protect my home uh, from traditional spraying to specialty treatments to uh, crawl space encapsulation. You name it, they can help your home and they can help you keep the bugs out. They can help you protect your house and your loved ones who are in your house. They are your best bet, folks. Southeast Termite and Pest Control. Call them this week. All right, I want to talk about how big of a disappointment was the 2023 season, but before I do that, I'm going to give you a quote from Mel Keaton yesterday, and if you go by Mr. Keaton, this was a horrible, horrible year. He said, we raised the expectation, the standard of this program. It's not like Tennessee is expecting to win eight games. It may be good for other schools, but our expectations are a national championship and an SEC championship. Okay, there you go. That's the preamble. Before this season, most sports books had Tennessee uh, as a nine and a half was the over under. Some had eight and a half. Most of the people on this panel, 10 wins. You said nine and three, maybe eight and four. I said nine and three, eight and four. You said 10, and, you said nine and three. Nine and three. You said nine and three. Mm -hmm. uh, Josh, I will start with you. All that said, how big of a disappointment was it? So during the off season, uh, spring, summer months, August leading up to the start of the year, you know, people will ask you, hey, what do you think? What, what's your record prediction? <laughs> And I would be nervous to say nine and three because I knew the look I was going to get. <laughs> right. I got a, di a lot of disappointed looks mm -hmm. on faces when I said nine and three, and they didn't get there. Uh, but I also I do think there is a point to the statement of if eight and four can be disappointing, there is a positive in that you have raised where you view the program. If eight and four can be disappointing, it's a lot better than where you've been over a right. you know long period of time. I think the most disappointing part is the way they lost those four games. Yes, exactly. Uh, 14 of the 16 quarters were rough mm -hmm. to watch for Tennessee fans. Mm -hmm. The first half against Alabama, they played well. Couldn't have gone worse in the second half of that game. So to me, that's more of the disappointing part, how they were blown out or beaten up over a lot of those four games. Yeah. Yeah, with uh, Keaton's right about they've raised expectations, and I would stop it there. But they, he, they have raised expectations. I think it's a minor disappointment in part for what Josh is saying, but also in part, this was an offense that averaged 46 points a game last year, and they dropped down to 30 before the Vanderbilt game, so they ended up with 32 mm -hmm. a game. So that was disappointing for fans. I don't think a lot of fans thought Tennessee's defense was going to be dominant, mm -hmm. but they wanted to see an offensive show, and they didn't get it in a lot of games. There were three games where they didn't even score in the second half. So I, I would call it a minor disappointment record-wise based on what I think reasonable people expected. Chuck. Yeah, I mean, it's how it happened. I, I go back to the second quarter at Florida. I mean, that was just like, oh, wow, what have we got here? Uh, and then it was second half at Alabama. Then you only score one touchdown at Missouri, one touchdown at home against Georgia. That's not 30 points a game, right? I mean, it's, it's how it happened to me. And, and you third, down, yeah, third down, you can't get off the field on defense, and you can't stay on the field on offense too many times. So that would be the disappointment to me, and I know Josh Heupel felt a lot the same way. To you, it should be the biggest disappointment of all because you're the one who said 10-2. and two. Well, There were other people who <laughs> no. said it, but do you agree that it's a big disappointment? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's, it, yes, I do, because you looked up the Vegas number, nine and a half, yeah. and, and you fell short of that. So, okay. And it's how it happened. It okay. 10. Bob. Since I kind of split the baby with nine and three and eight and four, I wasn't shocked by it. I did not think there was any way your offense was going to be as good as it was last year. I mm -hmm. just did not see that happen, and I thought your defense would be a little bit better. But I think your, your offense, the disappointing thing may be that it isn't a plug-and-play offense. Mm -hmm. that, okay, we've really got to have some really good guys for this to work like it did in 2022. <laughs> but it, like everybody else said, it was the way you lost that was disappointing. Not the fact mm -hmm. that you went eight and four because I thought that was on the table. Yes. I even thought maybe seven and five just simply because you lost so much on offense and I didn't trust what you had coming back. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, to me, I, I thought nine and three or eight and four because I didn't think Joe Milton would be up to the Hendon Hooker standard. I didn't mm -hmm. think the receivers would take the step back. I didn't think I it would be this big of a drop off. But all off season, I would point to that, the, the Orange Bowl and say, Go back and look. Go back and look at the Vandy game. It was still kind of clunky once Milton got in there, and it's been kind of clunky all year. I don't. And again, I don't put it all on him because your receivers. Again, you saw it yesterday with the drops, but I'm not surprised that the record is what it is. 
You lost to three top ten teams. You would have liked to have upset one of those. The Florida loss, you know, I just don't expect you to win at Gainesville. So I'm probably a little easier than most people here. Quickly. Well, one quick thing. Tennessee lost, in my opinion, six key offensive players from last year. None of the guys that replaced them were as good. None of them. None of them. And That's that led great. to a significant drop-off in offense. Great point. Uh, let me show you some numbers to put this in perspective. I always like to throw some context in it. So I did some math. Let me quickly run through this. This is just the fifth eight-win season for Tennessee since the SEC expanded in 2012. This could still be Tennessee's fourth nine-win season since SEC expansion if you win your bowl game. But look at this. This is the first three-year run of winning regular seasons since 2002, 2003, 04. So anybody who's mad saying Heupel stinks, you haven't seen this success in 20 years. And he inherited a much bigger mess than Philip Fulmer did. And Philip Fulmer was in his 10th year at this point. Go to the next graphic, please. Josh Heupel has won 19 games during the last two seasons. The last UT coach to win 19 games in two seasons, Philip Fulmer in 06 and 07. Josh Heupel could win 20 games if he wins his bowl game. Last coach to do that, that's also Philip Fulmer, but that's all the way back to 2003, 2004. Josh Heupel has won 26 games during his last three seasons. The last time that happened at UT, Philip Fulmer won 28 between 02, 03, 04. I think you're getting the point. Let's go to the next one. Wins the last two seasons in the SEC. Georgia's got 27, Alabama's got 22. That's it in terms of who's had more wins than Tennessee. You tied with LSU. They've also had 19, but you also beat them in Baton Rouge. But the last two years, only Georgia and Alabama have won more games. Let's look at the, the next one. Over the last three seasons, only Georgia, Alabama, and Ole Miss have won more games than Tennessee. Just a little perspective. Let's look at the next one. SEC coaches in their first three years. These are current SEC coaches in their first three years. These are the best. Nick Saban won 33 games in his first three years. Kirby Smart won 32 in his first three years. Josh Heupel's next. He can still win 27. He's next on that list. And then the last one, I think we got one more here. Best all-time winning percentage. This is just overall perspective. Tennessee always talks about the all-time win percentage. You're number 11 right now. That's after the NCAA penalty. You're number 11. Look at the all-time win percentage. But what that is, I translate that to a 12-game season. The best school in the country, Ohio State, wins 75% of their games. That's 9-3. and three. Alabama, 9-3. and three. Everybody else averages for their all-time years, 8-4. and four. Just a little context, <laughs> just a little perspective. <laughs> Again, it was the way they went 8-4 and four this year, though. Yeah. Some of those losses were ugly, so you can factor that in. But overall, mm -hmm. anybody who's saying, we can't accept 8-4, and four, well, <laughs> you don't understand the history of this league. <laughs> okay, when we come back, what went wrong with the offense this year? Three VFLs, we'll tackle that next. Come on back. <laughs> 